standing committee to order. Proof of notification, sir. Yes. Yes. Agenda approval. <laughs> 14 point. Mr. Cooley, Mr. Cosgrove. <laughs> any discussion on the agenda? We're going to take it in order unless somebody has any reason not. All those in favor of approving the agenda as posted, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. All right. We have an agenda. The minutes from our December 14th meeting. Any additional instructions? Questions? If not, I would stand for a motion to approve. No as vote. presented. Who is that? I'll make motion. Mr. Cooey? Second. Richard, Mr. McKee, second. Uh, all those in favor of approving the minutes from last month, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Say nay. All right. Minutes are approved. Uh, public. Anything? Do you have anything for public either? Clint? Nothing. All right. Moving on to number six. Courthouse maintenance report. Mr. Chair, update on the uh, different projects going on in the mate uh, on the courthouse and Randy, please step in if you need to make comment or correct me on any of these. The courthouse key and security project status on this is assistant Cheryl Dowell is currently working with the department's to inventory their keys. A meeting with administrator Langrick, maintenance supervisor Nelson, administrator of assistant Dowell, Sheriff Porter, and chief deputy will be held to discuss the current access concerns in course of action development. Again, our intentions through this initiative is to increase security while ensuring staff has necessary access to complete tasks. Currently, we have about 15 sets of keys yet to inventory. Uh, status on the DOJ grant application process for the second round, that is kind of in a complete time frame now. So we're looking to finalize everything and then submit off the remainder of the billing. With that is the door placement on the courtroom and I'll let Randy comment on, on the project there. Yeah, the door is um, temporarily in. Well, we're, we still got some stuff to finish up on it. Uh, we're waiting for Perkins to come to put the openers and stuff on, then we can close it up and do the electrical on it. Other than that, it's that's the last of the big projects. With our window replacement, I think they're in on December 27th. They came into measure, and I believe we're in an ordering process right now. Correct. Signage update, we are complete. You'll see the new signs up around the courthouse. Um, any additions or changes that's going to happen at this point will be kind of taken internally. Land and zoning move, uh, they are near complete, uh, waiting on the conference room uh, to have access to that once EMS, EMS is able to move out of there. Uh, they're still waiting on some occupancy permits, uh, getting their heating set up with a new heat exchange that's supposed to be coming in, and then also waiting for Genuine Telecom, I believe, to move their equipment out of the main building into the adjacent shed now, which was going to require a three-day power down. Um, so when we have those uh, elements kind of taken care of on their campus, then their final out. Now we're anticipating that about $1,855 to repaint that conference room and try to get that back into use. Uh, one of the pressing issues that we're trying to get is to arrange for some different trainings that um, the conservationist Kathy Cooper has in mind some with some farmers. So that's kind of the, the main initiative and push from our end to try to see if we can get that room freed up. Administration move, uh, finalizing desk and cubicle spaces this week, anticipating a move possibly before the end of the month pending feasibility for the phone and network changeover. Um, exploring possible improvements also in the small courtroom. Uh, there is a, a, a petition to try to improve the video conferencing capabilities. We're having quite a bit of uh, dual court appointments as well as uh, visiting judges that are coming in as uh, Judge McDougall has to, I think, a, a recuse herself from different uh, things in which she was kind of handling as the public defendant. So we have an uh, influx on need for that. So working with MIS to try to gauge out what a potential cost could be and see if we can potentially reappropriate funds to try to see if we can do that. Also working with uh, supervisor, uh, maintenance supervisor uh, Nelson in regards to a request for a window speaker unit for the register of probate. Other properties to report on Pine Valley farm lease and the land swap, um, that is still kind of on hold again until we kind of finalize on the county O project so that we're not um, having to impact on their different studies that they had on this. UW Campus Comper Top, the specification design is done and complete, and it should be in this week's paper. And then um, also we need to get it sent off to MIS to post onto the website. Mr. Chair. Anybody with questions on the maintenance projects? Seeing none, we'll move on to seven MIS administration administrative reports.
So we have hired a new halftime employee. His name is Josh Cracker. He's from the Hill Point area. He started about a month, uh, sorry, two weeks ago. It's been two full weeks. Um, he's just getting his feet wet, so you probably will hear his voice. Um, we are working right now on switching the iPads and the iPhones. We discovered through an open records request there were some problems that things were not enrolled properly and we need to get all iPhones back. Uh, we'll be looking for support from the committee to ensure that the county issued iPhones are brought back to MIS. Um, otherwise, it's lots going on with the radio tower project which if you're on that committee you've heard all the quotes are coming back we're looking at towers and how many we have to build um what's going on oh we got a huge grant we're moving our 911 from central square to vesta which is a big project uh that'll be implemented very soon. We have our kickoff meeting the next Tuesday. Where'd that grant come from, Barb? It's um, from the state of Wisconsin. It's part of the GIS grants. It was $244,000. Anybody with questions for Barb? No, they have to come back and be enrolled into our, um, we have software mobile management so that when they text, we can collect those texts into open records because all of the text messages are required to be kept for open records. They're collecting them unless it's iPhone to iPhone because those go through iMessaging which are not technically a text message. And we have to make sure that that feature is turned off so it does go over a text message. Which would be a good time to just remind all you, all of you as board members too, to make sure that you're not emailing your personal email accounts because that will become subject to open record and we're seeing that happen. Any other questions for Barb? If not, let's move to number eight, Mr. Josh. All right, uh, heavier month on bills, which we anticipated, um, larger ones on there. We finished the construction of the sand salt shed, so we did uh, pay that bill. Uh, they did give us a $1,000 discount because of the time lost for the rip in the tarp and the replacement, taking uh, time to get there. So that came out at 277,840. Uh, we did finish off getting our two new trucks from 2020, I believe they were, uh, into our fleet. So we had to finish paying for those body builds. So those were the big ticket items on here. And the rest is pretty much uh, standard maintenance items, a lot of uh, truck parts, $12,000 in truck parts. Um, so grand total for this month came in at $777,968.07. Mr. Chair. Questions on the bills as presented? Mr. Cosgrove? Second. Second by Cooley. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Bills are paid. Next up for you, projects. Uh, obviously, for last month, we've been fighting snowstorm after snowstorm after snowstorm, and it's been taking its toll on the Fleet at one point in time, we had over nine trucks down. We had two patrolmen sitting at home because we did not have trucks for them to operate, but we kept everything moving forward. A lot of what we saw was just the outdated trucks. Uh, they were put into the fleet in early 2000s. They've, they're have they way past their lifeline and they're kind of a problem model of international trucks. So uh, expensive repairs, we've been able to manage with having the larger repairs ship out to like the Bush out of La Crosse, Lakeside, out of Madison, RC Truck and Auto here locally, and then whatever we can handle in house. Um, we are extremely short on mechanics. Uh, we have one actually currently employed as a mechanic. The other ones are just basically patrolmen that are helping in the shop. And then our part superintendent is no longer going to be working for us. He is moving on. So we are going to be looking at replacing that position. 
uh, we do have interested people from within that want to move up into that slot and uh, some good candidates have already stepped forward so that will be manageable. Uh, to deal with the anticipated increase in truck breakdowns to keep everything flowing, we will increase the amount of outsourcing we do on our truck repairs because what we're seeing is it may cost a few more bucks per hour to have that those pieces of equipment uh, worked on, but the turnaround on those trucks are phenomenal. Uh, it's only a day or two and we're having them right back in our fleet. Uh, the other thing that we ran into was our building is kind of outdated. Not much repairs have ever been done to that building since it was constructed. The garage doors are one thing in question. As uh, many recall, we did budget for that in 2022 for the year of 2023 to have all garage doors replaced. Unfortunately, two main garage doors where we house our plow trucks are failing. Uh, they are waterlogged, they are extremely heavy, so they are completely falling apart. So we did have to proceed forward with emergency purchase, bypassing the bid process to purchase the two doors that are giving us the most critical problems. And then we will bid out the rest underneath normal standards. Just for instance, I'll bring up a picture for the load for everybody to see. That was a Monday night on the day, or what was it, New Year's Day, I believe it was. Uh, all we did was hit the up button to open up the garage door and it completely came apart. This separated from the rest of the door, parts went flying. It was wedged into place to get it shut. We were, had to use the loader with just pure, uh, pure force to get it to shut and some screws and stuff and clamps to hold it in place to seal up the building. Uh, since then, we were able to get Garage Door Express on site and have all the parts replaced with old used parts, but they are functional for the time being. So we're still we're holding our own. Uh, Mr. Chair. Dr. Westerlo. Uh, yes. So if you remember that, some of us, we met out there in COVID times. So yeah, those are 30 plus years old. No, uh, since the building was built. So yeah, I think you're pushing them 30 some years old now. Yep. Any other questions for Josh on project updates? Yeah, Mr. Chair. Mr. Carroll. Yeah, uh, I was just wondering with, the aging trucks, whether your 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 uh, capital spending plan needs to be revisited, maybe? The current capital spending plan that we kind of initiated and put into place is kind of where we need to be right now to get back ahead of the game. We need to be doing at least two trucks a year to get, get these older trucks replaced. And so far, we've been able to keep up on that, and we project to stay on that course for the years to come, even through the so two, a year. two a year. Two a year at the bare minimum. Can I have you comment on availabilities for getting two vehicles a year at the present? So everybody knows that availability of equipment is just non-existent. When we're sending out bids per year right now, we are literally not buying trucks. We're buying a slot for a build date. Um, I have done some digging around. We were able to locate two trucks that are off everybody else's radar at this point that are going to be rolling off the assembly line this year, and we have a chance to grab them. Uh, we do have to follow the proper bid processes, do everything legal and correct. Uh, we, the RFPs for those trucks will go out at the end of this week. We will be reviewing them at the next public works meeting um, and then accepting those bids. And then once we do that, if we can, if everything falls in the line right in their favor, we'll get those trucks and we'll actually have trucks in our fleet this year, the same year we purchased some, which is phenomenal. The two trucks that we ordered last year, in 2022's budget, we won't even see those trucks as soon as what we could see these trucks. So, what do we have on order, Josh? Just two right now. Right now, we currently have two internationals on order. Anybody else? Questions, comments? And that that would be five total since I've been on here. We just because we got one last year, right? Or you got one earlier this year? We got three this year. Yeah. So those three were supposed to be here two years ago. Correct. And then you got two more ordered for next year that won't come till 24. We won't see the frame and chassis roll off assembly line until 2024. Yep. And then so this is an opportunity to stay on course, basically. Correct. You're going to spend 24's, 23's money this year and 22's money in 24. <laughs> Whatever. Pretty much, yeah. You know what I mean? That's why you ordered them anyway. Now, keep in mind what we budgeted for for the 2023 budget was one loader replacement, one truck replacement because of the cost of an overall purchase of a loader. But again, we've reached out trying to do things differently. Instead of owning that equipment outright, it's more, it, 
it's a better purchase option or not even a purchase option. It's better for the county to rent that piece of equipment from year to year because it covers all your maintenance costs and it keeps new equipment rotating in and out every year. And underneath a rental program for that, instead of spending $300,000 anticipated on a loader, we can spend maybe 18 or 20,000 a year and have a complete covered unit and a trade out every single year of a new piece of equipment. So we'll take the savings from that and put it towards a second truck for purchase this year. How many total plow routes, Josh? We have 19 plow routes, which gives us 19 trucks. And when we started the season, we had, I think, one spare county truck and one spare state truck. And right now we have, we're, we're pushing back up to, um, we'll have five spare trucks by the time we get everything fixed and back online. Uh, if there's nothing else, we'll go to Mr. Carroll on referendum updates. Do have one more thing. Though. Oh, you do have? Yeah, down at the that's an action item. Action item. Oh, all right. Yeah, number ten. You want to work on that one? Sure. Update us on what you're thinking there. Okay, so with me state i stated earlier that we cannot get mechanics we've been advertising for an actual mechanic for over a year now to no avail we haven't had anybody come in a lot of it's just because we're completing with the competing with the private sector primarily out of the big cities like madison and lacrosse uh, availability around here for what we can pay an hour is just not there um so what i'd like to do uh is do some kind of a recruitment and retention package for the highway department for mechanics and patrolmen to keep employees either there or try to draw in new ones. I'm not looking on changing the hourly wage because I've compared us to the other counties locally like Crawford, uh, Vernon, Iowa, um, and uh, La Crosse. And we're right there. We're right there where we should be as far as a competing price. So what I'd like to do for the mechanics is do a tool allowance because as it states right now in our policies, the mechanics have to supply their own tools. Well, if anybody's worked on a piece of equipment, they know, they know that tools are not cheap. They're very expensive. And when it comes to this kind of equipment, it takes a lot of specialty tools that the mechanics have to buy out of their own pockets to use on the county's equipment. So what I'd like to do is just a simple thousand dollar tool allowance for them to be able to use per year. Um, it would be at the, I've sat down with Clint, we talked about some of this of how we can possibly make this work, but we're also looking for input today from this committee to see how, if you have any other ideas of how we can improve that. But $1,000 tool allowance, the other part would be a doing a uh, paying for their uniforms, reimbursing them for their uniform costs, because obviously they're trashing a whole heck of a lot of clothes being covered in hydraulic fluid and oil all day long, rip and tear working on trucks. And then the other part, the th uh, third and last one would be an extra dollar an hour um during weather weather call out so anything outside the hours of 7 a.m to 3 30 p.m we would pay them an additional dollar an hour extra past or on top of their overtime cost or basically let's call it hazard pay so they come out and plow snow because that's it's a lot of hours on these guys to work they've been working you know up until this past week or this week they've been working every single day nonstop plowing snow and it, it eats on them so try to give something back to retain them so they don't end up leaving to go somewhere else in the private sector so anybody have thoughts or input towards this we're gonna just look in the field to get what you guys think today um, i'll work with clint we'll draft something up we'll bring it back next month for you guys to look at kind of nail nail everything down and then we'll proceed forward from there if we have your approval to do so Yes. Same thing at Heart Tongue Brothers for the committee. I and we do a every year. They have to report into me any mainly for insurance reasons. I think I, we talked about that when we were just at the highway department. But I've got guys with fifty and sixty thousand dollars, seventy thousand dollars worth of tools, and they did have a fire thirty years ago at Heart Tongue Brothers. So that's why we do a we record all their tools, their value, and if they bring me a new tool, and we have tool replacement. If they wear out, well, we've had guys wear out curls, cordless impacts, and usually I upgrade them to the next level because a lot of times the one they have, you can't buy anymore. But uh, yeah, so you're, I think some of the guys out there, maybe we don't have a true, true, real mechanic out there right now. One, but he's on his way out. His last day is on the 20th. And then after that, all we have is patrolman operators basically filling in as a mechanical role. 
some of the tools we do own that big scan tool we bought, right? Yeah, like the real special equipment, like the scan tool to be able to access the truck's computers to clear codes and everything the county has purchased. Uh, there's some other bigger, larger special tools, such as oblong sockets for particular things on trucks. The county will purchase that, but your typical everyday tools, such as your wrenches, sockets, hammers, you know, things of that nature, the employee is expected to provide. Good job. Yes, it is. I have, oh, go ahead. The, uh, I have one guy who works on all of our semi trailers. He has park wrench that goes up to 600 foot pounds. It's basically a thousand dollars for new ones. But if you buy the good ones, they're covered under warranty. So it's. The tools would go with them, yes. And they toolboxes are 20 to 30 dollars. That's a toolbox. You stated you checked wages with those other counties. Did you yes. also ask about the options that you're talking about? Yes, I did. So I reached out to, in this case, I reached out to Vernon County, um, Grant County, Crawford, and La Crosse County. And everybody offers something comparable along those uh, lines. Uh, Vernon County does offer a $1,000 tool allowance, plus an extra 250 an hour premium uh, for the plow drivers on state roads. Um, Grant County, see here they do get additional overtime added to them uh, with a little bit of premium uh, Crawford does not offer anything extra uh, but they're working on it they're starting down that road of trying to retain their employees because they're in the same boat we are Vernon County is in the same boat we are they have one actual function mechanic for the size of Vernon County's highway department and then let's see here La Crosse County offers $500 in tool and then for every certification their mechanic has, he gets a $1 an hour bump in pay. So what we're doing is not something completely out of, or what I'm asking for is not something completely out of the blue. We've asked around and we're trying to compete with the other counties to be more on a comparable page. We could do more. <laughs> But I think to get things started, $1,000 is a fair place to start because without going to Matco or Snap-on or some of the bigger names companies, if you go to like Napa down the road, $1,000 will go, go on a fair distance to buy decent tools for everyday work. Question to anybody for Josh. Uh, the dollar an hour would cover the mechanics that they were called in and all plow drivers? Because I all mentioned all plow, all patrolmen and mechanics that were called in during weather events, flooding and snow, basically, they would get a dollar an hour extra on top of their overtime wage, which seven of the employees that would be 100% covered by the state because the state reimburses for that and the rest would be covered by revenues. So we wouldn't be asking for anything additional out of the county for funding for that. And probably the same with a thousand dollar tool loans. Right, that would be covered by the revenues that we produce. Um, Clint, I don't think we need a motion, just acceptance to move forward. I, I do not, it was kind of put on your more as a discussion item to get feedback from your committee. So I don't think you need to take any type of action. Yeah, uh, between now and next month, Clint and I will sit down. We'll, like I said, we'll nail out the details and put it on the screen so everybody can see it, how we're going to structure it and then how we'll structure each individual item, how it's going to work. And then once we have your approval on that, then we'll proceed forward. Perfect. Any other questions on that? If not, where are we at? Nine, Mr. Carroll? Sure. Okay, so a month ago, I was gonna go over the research the ad hoc committee had done and, and uh, kind of explain all of the education stuff we were gonna utilize to, to spread the word, but things have been moving. So I'll tell you this month that um, the ad hoc committee <coughs> Return our report to the finance and personnel committee, and we, at this point, decided not to run a referendum. And if if the uh, board goes with that, then there will not be a referendum this spring. We uh, were able to crank numbers and determine there were other ways to make make things work. So at this point, there will not be a referendum. Anybody with questions for Mr. Carroll? Is there any of the the, I, the departments had to kind of give a proposed 
things that would be cut? Are any of those being cut then or other? Well, yeah, there, like there have been cuts and, and those were all part of the calculation. Um, we'd have to go to the, the latest, uh, um, what's the term we're using Clint for your spreadsheet? And so there's a report and then there's the five year planning document that yeah, it kind the five-year planning document would show which, which cuts have been incorporated and, and yes there are cuts in addition to um, some more borrowing and those Steve or Clint could actually be called they were kind of like voluntary cuts would you call them that much that's the, that's the... no that's the verbiage that's being used voluntary is a in the eye of the beholder kind of a thing They weren't forced. Yes, sir. I guess I wasn't paying too much attention until you said there will be no referendum. So can you back up a little bit? And what what would uh, what would happen that would negate the need for a, a referendum? Can you, re can you repeat that? Got to be listening around here. Um, no, the main thing was that we we felt like we could we could uh, take advantage of some statutes that allow certain specific operating costs to be uh, uh, shifted over to short-term borrowing. So basically, our, our our amount that we short-term borrow is going to increase, and that does not require going to the voters. Okay, uh, thanks. I'll pay closer attention now. On. Doubt it. <laughs> Well, <laughs> who's hurts? But uh, are we ready for number eleven? Let's adjourn because nobody can stop us. Well, we got a lot to go yet. If that's good, everybody's good up to number eleven and moving to closed session. That's great. I'll make motion. All right, so we're going to move into closed session pursuant to Wisconsin State Statute nineteen point eight five one C. Considering employment promotion, compensation, or performance evaluation data, or any public employee over which the government body has jurisdiction or exercises responsibility. So, we have the first uh, motion and second, and we'll do roll call. Aye for Williamson. Aye. 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 All right, and I by that. So. Unanimous to go into closed session. So who can we leave in here to turn off the? I was going to say, is there anybody online that needs to be in? There is not. Okay, so I am going to just put everybody to the lobby since we don't need a breakout, and then <clears throat> lock the meeting. And then I can get. I'll get the. Uh, I'll get the motions from closed session, and I'll. Get them to get them your way, Josh. Yeah. And Josh, you're also excluded. Probably be about. Bring it back in. Okay. We're going to talk about you too, just so. I'm just going to. If you want to stay, you want to do yours first, dear. Oh, Barb's got to leave as well. I'm going to talk about Barb too. No, I don't want to stay anyway. Sorry, guys. You know that. Yeah, I'm going to pause the recording. Sorry. It's fair now. So, do you want to come back in a session there? Sure. Oh, you did it. Uh, no, it's fine. We're good. We are now back into live open session here in downtown Richmond Center. <laughs> Uh, the only, tell uh, Mr. Elder your thoughts, please. Yeah, the only thing I was thinking is when you have a mechanic, you know, the situation we're in with mechanics, I make sure you reach out to RC Truck and Auto and everybody in the area to make sure, you know what I mean, so that you even, I, I would look at it, if we're not going to be able to find one, we need someone who's going to work on stuff, you know, at a moment's notice or best that we can, so be worth talking to them. Uh, I can actually speak to that. So what we've done with um, like engineering firms in the past is do general contracts. And that's kind of my plan for this. So, 
utilizing a local business first like RC, we'll do a small general contract with them and outline, you know, the priority of our trucks during weather events. And then larger repairs will probably reach out to like DeBush that's served us very well lately uh, that we get majority of our parts from and do another general service contract and basically do two different contracts at different levels of um, service is what my plan is right now. Yeah, you know, that'd be my only thing. We don't have any trucks around it. We're going to get a lot of phone calls that day. That, that'd be my guess. <laughs> you know, and that's, yeah. I mean, that is a sad truth of what happens the minute one truck goes down and he's blowing a hydraulic hose, something simple, but it takes several hours to get to because it spans the whole length of the truck. Well, phone calls start immediately of when are you going to get to my road? Meanwhile, I'm trying to divert other trucks to cover that route and they're still trying to get their route done. And in an all day event, phone calls become endless because they think we just sit in the county shop not doing anything and they're not understanding the amount of repairs that we're trying to keep the trucks on the road and get them back back running. Anybody else with future agenda items? I recommend I've got a, a note here from Treasurer Even. Um, there was no bid that was received on the property. I recommend that we establish next meeting a agenda item to set a new bid, new minimum bid with a due date. Will that require, I mean, oh, but, I mean that of it, but on property in the Guadalupe, is that going to require advertising again? I think we'll have to reset the bid and then we'll have to then advertise after that again on when we would receive bids. Because eventually, yeah, I remember what the previous court council had said after the first two bids. I guess if we can have that clarification after two bids, then we could sell. Without bidding it, if some, and that may have changed even with the, oh, maybe it was three bids, three, three attempts to try and sell it. Anyway, find it. By next time would be great because I think it costs us what three, four hundred dollars to run that. We're going to have a thousand dollars in something that we might get. Not a thousand dollars, obviously, as far as advertising. Just from future or our previous experience, but. All right, anybody else with anything? Otherwise, we'd entertain a motion to adjourn. Mr. McKee. I'll second. Second by Julie. All those in favor, say good bye bye, say aye. All right. Aye. aye. Four people.